I'm Dr. Uh, Alan Katz, and uh, I work uh, at Flushing Radiation Oncology in uh, New York City. Dr. Katz, you've been working extensively with CyberKnife radiation treatment for localized prostate cancer. Can you tell us a little about your experience with this treatment to date? What the CyberKnife is, is a, a robotic device that has a linear accelerator at the end of it. The robot moves around the patient, treats from hundreds of different angles, and is able to deliver very focused radiation to the uh, prostate. In addition, it has, one of the, uh, has a unique feature of being able to track the position of the prostate during the treatment. As we now know, prostates move quite a bit during the treatment, and we put four seeds into the prostate, uh, which, which are made of gold, and these are tracked continuously during treatment, and the CyberKnife actually uh, allows for uh, continuous upgrading of the position and, and automatic adjustment to make sure that the accuracy is there. Now, with this accuracy that we have, we're able to escalate the dose, and instead of the normal 45 treatments, that's the standard today, in, um, especially in the United States, we give five large fractions. And it turns out, we've known for a long time with other things like high dose rate implants, that prostate cancer responds actually better to a few larger doses than to many small doses. So we're actually able to take advantage of this uh, uh, radiobiology and deliver this very safely. So our program is basically for patients who have organ-confined disease. If there's any evidence that the disease has spread, the CyberKnife would not be for them. The patients um, that, we, um, that we treat, or, um, in general, get five treatments uh, on a Monday through Friday basis, and each treatment takes about half hour to 45 minutes with the new machines. Um, we found that we're doing less treat using it as a boost for higher grade disease because we found that there was probably, so far it doesn't appear to be any, uh, any advantage. So the patients all get um, these fiducial seeds placed, then they get a CAT scan and an MRI, and it's important to use an MRI to help us in planning because it, it allows us to better visualize the prostate and it allows us to minimize the volume that we, uh, of tissue that we treat. So the patients come in, they get the seeds put in, they get a CAT scan and an MRI, we do all the planning, and then they come in for five consecutive days. So they just have to lie on a table, the robot moves around them, it's totally non-invasive, the patients can go to work uh, during the rest of the day. Um, most patients get very mild acute side effects, they get a few minutes, uh, rather a few weeks, excuse me, of um, uh, some slow stream, some frequency of urine, similar to other forms of radiation, goes away. Similarly, they get some rectal urgency uh, and frequency. And this generally goes away after about two weeks. Interestingly, longer term, we're seeing very low rates of late toxicity. The um, uh, <clears throat> percent of patients that we're seeing getting any significant complications is only a few percent. So it's as good, really, or, or if not better, than other forms of radiation. Are there any limitations on the type of organ-confined disease you can treat in regard to prostate size? We actually have the advantage of being able to plan very well regardless of the size of the prostate. So we actually have treated many patients whose prostate is greater than 100 cc's, which is very difficult to do with other forms of radiation. Uh, one of the other things I might add, this means that the patients don't have to have um, hormonal treatment to shrink the gland. And in fact, with these high doses, it's also been shown that um, hormonal treatments really do not increase the efficacy of the radiation. So in general, our patients are able to avoid the bad side effects of, the, of hormonal manipulation. Um, and <clears throat> having said that, so we now have patients out more than four years. And in patients who are out over three years, our median PSA has already dropped to 0 0.10, which is extremely low and actually much lower than, than standard forms of radiation like IMRT. Uh, we uh, have had, uh, in low and intermediate risk patients, no local failures at this point. We've had a few distant failures, which can happen, but we've succeeded at this point virtually 100% of the time out of three to four years. Obviously, we need to get longer term data to confirm this, but what is very encouraging is that the very low PSAs we know with other forms of radiation correlate very well with long-term outcomes. <clears throat> In addition, what's also very encouraging is because we're giving very focused treatment, 
and we, and we give less dose to the neurovascular bundle and to the area where blood flows into the penis, we seem to be getting a higher rate of potency preservation. So obviously this is a very important issue for many men when they're faced with what kind of treatment they'd like for prostate, their prostate cancer. So we're seeing over 80% of the men at three years maintaining potency, which is much better than the 50 to 60% reported with IMRT or with uh, surgery, even with robotic surgery. How do you see the future developing for CyberKnife therapy, particularly as a potential salvage therapy? We um, actually have, um, are starting to look at a, a, a couple of different failure protocols. One of them is failing IMRT, using it to try to uh, retreat an area, and that's something that's just, we're just in the very uh, early stages of. Uh, and it may be also something useful for uh, salvage after, uh, after either surgery or cryo failure, something like that as well. But this is something that we're looking for the future. Right now, we're really focused on it as a primary uh, treatment. Right now, acceptance of this modality in the United States is very, very slow. There are many, many entrenched interests in terms of uh, what treatments are being given. And so the, we're, we're just trying to focus right now on gaining acceptance. I think my data um, is um, so far very supportive of its use. And obviously, one of the criticisms is that we don't have very long-term data. But that's something, obviously, we'll collect as we go. But the, again, to reiterate, the very low PSAs we're seeing, uh, I think, make us extremely optimistic.